When I saw this condo kitchen, I thought it might be beyond saving, but since the cabinets were a custom size, I thought I'd try to clean them before giving up on them completely, and I was surprised at the difference. Just wait until you see this transformation. I started by cleaning everything thoroughly with soapy water. Then I removed the cabinet doors at the hinges. I was surprised to see even more items left behind in the cabinet. I washed the cabinet doors several times, removed the hinges from the doors themselves, then went over them with a soft lint-free cloth and a deglosser. You could see the difference right away. The cabinets didn't look damaged, and so I thought I'd go ahead and paint them. I used a color by Sherwin-Williams called Chat Room. I applied the paint using a paint sprayer that I had received in a prior project. When it came time to painting the cabinet boxes, I first taped off the area using this painter's tape with an attached plastic tarp. It was easy to cover up everything that I didn't want painted, and then I was able to spray paint it in no time at all. I applied two different coats of the paint, each one very lightly. This way I didn't have any streaks or drip marks anywhere. I let everything dry overnight, and then the next day I did the other side of the doors first thing in the morning when I arrived. I had cabinet doors literally everywhere. I put them on the ironing board, on cans to get them off the floor. I made sure to put butcher paper down so that I wouldn't have any dust everywhere. Once those were dry, I added brand new hinges onto the doors and attached those onto the cabinet boxes again. Then I needed to go ahead and add new handles to make it look more modern. When I attach my poles, I start by using a template to mark the location of the bottom part of the handle. I then flip it over and use that same spot on the template to mark the other door. I take the screw and attach the bottom part of the pole. I liked these big handles. They're about 10 inches, so they're larger than most people would use, but I like the way they look. What we did splurge on was spending money on granite countertops. Along with the new granite, I also purchased a new sink and faucet to make everything look more modern. It was looking really good, but I still needed to do something to fix this backsplash. I decided to do something a little bit outside of the normal. I usually do a tile mosaic backsplash, but this time I decided to use shiplap. I painted it first to make it a little bit of a gray color to go well with the countertops. Then I measured and cut the shiplap pieces. It only took about 45 minutes to get all the shiplap backsplash completed, and I think it looks great. Here's the after. You can see that there was a really big transformation when you look back at the before and now to the current state of the kitchen. Of course, new appliances helped as well. That modernized everything. I hope this inspired you to renovate your kitchen. Hello, and welcome to 48 Hour Flip. I'm Renee, and I'm going to show you how I am going to do a refresh on my kitchen in under 48 hours. Let's go. Our kitchen has great bones, but it just doesn't feel like me. I want it to feel like it's more than just for cooking and cleaning. The first thing that I'm going to do is to remove all of the hardware throughout the kitchen. This is so easy to do with just a screwdriver. Here is a great tip for spray painting hardware. I just poke holes in a cardboard box and screw on my hardware. This is a great way to hold my hardware up straight while I spray paint. While the cabinet hardware is drying, I'm gonna start working on the island. I am using some craft paper and some frog tape. I be sure to tape off carefully anything that I don't want paint on. Here's a great tip. I use this glass cleaner to clean my woodworking projects first. Not only does it clean it, but it removes just enough of the finish so that the paint sticks well. I am using Dixie Bell paint for the island. It covers really well and leaves very little brush strokes in it. I will do two coats of the Dixie Bell paint on the island as the foundation. Here's a great tip. If you lightly mix with some water and brush over it, it removes the breast strokes. For this whitewash, I'm just using regular old wall paint and water. It mixes easily and I don't have to do a finished coat on top. Then using a paintbrush, I just paint it right on top of my paint. 
I don't have to be too neat and tidy with this because I'm going to be wiping most of it off. This is a fun and easy process. I'm leaving the paint in the corners and around the edges and I'm also leaving some streaks on the larger areas to add character. Doesn't this hardware look gorgeous? I love the sparkle and the warmth that it adds to the room. And now it's time to tackle the shelves. I remove each one of the shelves with my drill. And using a spackle knife and some spackle, I repair the walls. Once the spackle is dry, I tape off all of my trim and paint the walls. And now it's time for the fun stuff, the accessories. I love vintage anything. This vintage shelf just makes my heart smile. I add vintage artwork above it and I hang some vintage copper pots below. I put some cute little pots with ferns in the window sills and then I add a cutting boards and a bit more greenery. To add a little bit more fun and detail, I add a boxwood wreath tied on with a buffalo chuck bow. Don't these bar stools look so amazing? I'm putting together these little topiaries. I love the topiaries themselves, but I didn't like the bucket that they were in. So I am placing them into a terracotta bucket and again, I tie on a buffalo check ribbon. I continue to add a little bit of greenery and fun with accessories all around the kitchen. Here is the before and here is the after. Doesn't it look amazing? I love all of the greenery, the sparkle of the hardware, and the faux finish on the island. This remodel turned out so well, it has inspired me to tackle the bathroom next. Look out for my next 48-hour flip.